awaken. Young ones, you must rise. No, the thaw has not yet come, but the time for sleeping has ended. Taste the air, my children. What do you sense? Warm bloods, yes. Many of them, and horses too. What else? Fire. Good. Your senses are sharp. But that could mean a pilgrimage or a trade caravan. There is something else. Something important. Can you smell it? Yes. You have experienced this scent before, and in your lives, you will likely come to know it well. It is the oil the warm bloods use on their metal weapons and armor, and the strength of the scent leaves no question to their purpose. This group is preparing for battle, and they are making their way up the pass to this mountain. No, I do not know why. Perhaps another predator slinked into this land as we slept and overhunted, and the Mormlets believe it to be our doing. Or they may have a new ruler, one who seeks to destroy our kind for power and glory among their people. It might even be a band of adventurers and mercenaries hunting us for treasure, sport, and ingredients for their crude magics. Or to found a kingdom of their own. In the end, the why of it matters not. Once the warm bloods embrace death, it becomes wing, claw, and scale to them. Whoever they are, and whatever their motivation, they are determined, and they are knowledgeable. Our might allows us to move in this cold when we must. Most of the scaled races would perish in this climate, or become completely dormant, and thus helpless. The weakness you feel, however, is the cold of winter. You may be tempted to breathe fire onto yourselves, but do not. The effect is fleeting, and you may need your energy to fight. Preserve your fire until the enemy is close so that you may warm yourself on their pain. But let us hope it does not come to that. I had hoped to see you off after the thaw, and to give you a more gentle beginning. The warm bloods are not far off, however, and there is one more lesson I must impart to you. Listen well, for when I am finished, you must leave, and we will not meet again. You embark this night to find lairs of your own. 
times past, our first thought could be for luxury. The dragon who laired near the glowing blood fire of Saska was assured a life of comfortable sleep. But that was before the warm bloods poured themselves into every crevice in Alvir. Your priority must be for defense. Wherever you lair, do your best to ensure that you have at least two exits, and that one or more of them can only be accessed by air or water. Try to find a cavern with a lake or river. Explore it to see where the water comes and goes. Warm bloods have tiny breath, so the longer you must remain submerged to travel, the better. At your size, you will have Many predators, I am afraid. And your enemies will be braver and more bloodthirsty. You must be guarded and rely more on your wits than on your claws and fire. You should do this even if you grow larger than me for physical prowess is much easier to counter than a sharp mind. Remember the lessons I have taught you, young ones. As you travel, look for the markings of other dragons, and learn the boundaries of their lands. We do not actively hunt our own, but they will defend their territories as ferociously as you must defend yours. Use all of your senses. Trust your instincts and remain ever alert. Never underestimate the reach of the warm bloods and their allies. The clever among them will try to use you. The rest will try to kill you. Remember that they look to the stars for their magic and are dependent upon the chains that enslave Saska. Warm blood magic is much more varied than our own, though less powerful and less pure. We too are capable of using the god songs, but it is a betrayal of our kind to do so with one exception. Forogard, god of dwarves, stood alone among the gods against Oa's judgment, and his song contains hidden stanzas that, when drawn out from the rest, form a new song. One of rebellion. It is known only to a select few among the scaled races, and to our counterparts among the dwarves. You heard me correctly, young ones. Among the warm bloods, there is a secret society of dwarves dedicated to freeing Saska. They call themselves the Order of Axe and Moon, and they 
are the keepers of the song. If you wish to learn this magic, mark a stone in your territory with fire and draw a circle in the soot with your claw. Observe the rock each night that Umbrit eclipses Ilea. If one of these dwarves, whom they call Overlanders, observes the mark, they will draw an axe inside of the circle. When you see the axe, burn the rock again so that no sign remains. Return to the rock each night of Ganica's tears. One of those nights, the Overlander will present themselves to you. They will teach you the song of rebellion, but they will ask something of you in return. It may be immediate, or it may come years later. Whatever they ask, you must accept. To betray that bond is to betray Saska. The Overlanders are dedicated to freeing the great dragon from Alvir, and whatever they ask of you will serve to further that noble goal. Even if they ask for your certain death, you must find comfort in the knowledge that it will serve the greatest of goods. Obviously, this is not a decision to make lightly. But in return for your service, you will learn the song which will aid you in many ways. Thorgard is the god of dwarves, but he also holds dominion over protection and defense of the home. This magic will make your lairs harder to find and more dangerous for your foes to navigate. There are other powers they may teach you, but that is each Overlander's choice to make. And now, my children, you must go. Out through the tunnel that leads into the next valley, stay low and travel the length of the valley before you leave each other. Whatever you do, and wherever you go, you must never return here. If I am slain, this place will most certainly be trapped by the warm bloods to catch any dragon who tries to make their lair here. And if I live, I must consider your return a challenge for my domain. Goodbye, my children. Remember my teachings. Remember yourselves. And know that you are loved. You may enter, Overlander. They are gone. Greetings, Lord of Dragons. You have grown since we last met. 
And you have grown influential. You bring an army to my home. As a courtesy, my home calls for us. And, and it is safer for my children to think their den has been overrun. So they do not fight each other to claim it. But if I was to know, the Duke of this region was preparing to attack you during the next storm. Indeed. He hoped the snowfall would cover their approach. He will be at war soon, and seeks to feel his call first before them. This is certainly the treasure of the gods. An illusion of godly treasure, you mean? Yes, of course. Yet I feel myself drawn to it. Yes, it is part of the magic. Do not admire it too closely, Overlander. The spell draws its power. power as well since last we met. This is good. You will need it for the tasks ahead. I serve the goddess to free Saska. What does she ask of me? War is coming. A storm brews over the eternal swamp in the land of Polia. Am I to prevent this storm? Nay, you must gather the pieces and set the wall. And how is this a task for a dragon? Claw and scale may aid you in some of your tasks, but it is your wisdom and your tactical skills that we need. You flatter me, Overlander. But the army approaches. You can tell me more on the way. My apologies, Great One. The wizards of the Duke's army look to the sky, and they have prepared their spells against you. You did your job perfectly, then. Very well. We will exit through the side tunnel and make our way down the opposite side of the ridge. It has been years since I used this form, but it should suffice. Now, tell me about the players in this game. The first is a potentate of a crater of depravity known as Fowler's Gate, a thoroughly corrupt human known only as the Margrave. I am sorry you lost your children so abruptly. They are strong, and I will have others. And years from now, I will tell them tales of this war. Now, tell me more of this Margrave. He is not the key, but he knows all the locks, and he controls the board. You're mixing your metaphors, Overlander. Well, perhaps this Margrave will require the services of a capable subordinate. Hmm. Nothing too lofty. A sergeant, perhaps? <laughs> 